Danny Mullins bidding him. for a double. Danny said to me yeah. after his yeah, first winner that uh, this was best chance of his remaining bueno, rights to come. Let's get up to Peter for an interesting second division over Maiden Hart. Es de Neptuno, uno de los traders eh, que seguí cuando comencé en esto. Hizo esta planilla que se mete todos los ciclos y consiste en doblar cada ciclo. Off and racing in race 4, the second division of the Quintus Towns Physics Club, Sunday, June 11th, Maiden Hurl, as they head up the straight to flight number 1, extrapolation in Upper Tandy, the mediator close up. Sign from above and towards the outside of the group Calisman and Tour Moon. At the first, Nepertandi in the blue and white colours jump through, slight mistake Tour Moon as they head up to pass the judge. Nepertandi, Daryl O'Keefe goes on, extrapolation in the green and white, Danny Mullins towards the inside in the centre. The mediator Keith Dunahoo and towards the outside, signed from above and Sean Flanagan, the leading quartet, closely followed on the inside by Barry Lind and Connor Maxwell. Tour Moon not far off them. Under Liam Quinlan, in the grey in the centre, Colonel Bellew, Rachel Blackmore, as they stream out over the second flight where Nepertandi took a chance. Remains close up, but extrapolation has taken over as they head around the turn. It'll bring them to flight number three at the top of the track. Extrapolation going on. Nepertandi is second, the mediator third, Barry Linden next with sign from above, and then the grey is Colonel Bellew, headed over that, or followed over that flight by Tour Moon. I see you now is in mid division, followed downhill by Tumani and also Kalsman. As they continue away from the stands, heading on to flight number four on the side of the track. Extrapolation out in front, followed by Nepertandi and the mediator. Sign from above is towards the outside of Barry Linden, just behind him is Colonel Bailey. As they reach this flight, which brings them to the turn into the back straight. Extrapolation over leads by about four lengths. Slight mistake there, the mediator pushed along for a few strides. Disputing third spot as they make the swing into the back. Extrapolation out in front, Napper Tandy. Second, the mediator signed from above, Colonel Bailey and Tour Moon next, and then Captain Linden behind them is too many with Cal's men, the white and blue of I see you now as they jump flight number five and away from it. The mediator made another slight mistake there as they continue up to the stands. Extrapolation leads by length and a half. Napper Tandy second, signed from above on the outside third. The mediator is four to break of two and a half to Colonel Bellew and Tour Moon and behind them is Barry Linden as they near the fourth last flight. Extrapolation by just about a length, and Upper Tandy jumps it in second. Sign from above, third. Another mistake, the mediator scrubbed along, losing contact with the leading trio. At least in the short term, Colonel Bellew is behind them, Tour Moon, a break of a few lengths to Barry Linden, pushed along, and a further break back then to Rockview Roman trying to make some headway. Also making a little headway towards the outside is some bro as they turn and head across towards the third last flight. The lead is less than the length as extrapolation shows the way. Napper Tandy a close second sign from above, looming up on the outside in third. The mediator will land in fourth and then Colonel Bellew and the inside is Barry Linden and their Tour Moon and behind them Rockview Roman trying to stay on from the back. Behind them is On Or as they jump to second last. Extrapolation lead sign from above in second. In third is Napper Tandy a break of a few lengths then to Barry Linden back in fourth. The mediator is weakened as they Make the turn for home. Extrapolation. Danny Mullins tackled by sign from above and Sean Flanning and a break to Barry Linden on the outside. Connor Maxwell staying on past Napper Tandy in fourth position as they head up the straight with over a furlong to race and just the one flight to jump. A sign from above up on the outside. Challenging extrapolation. Not much to choose between them. Barry Linden is closing in third and then a break at the last. Extrapolation the inside, stand side with the white cap, battling away is signed from above with a narrow advantage now. Coming home best of all on the outside is Barry Linden, and Barry Linden is swept up on the outside to take over as they go to the line. Barry Linden will win for Dermot McLaughlin and Connor Maxwell. Extrapolation second, signed from above, clear of honor in fourth and never tending. Eh, 15,93, vale. Entonces me vengo aquí, voy al ciclo 1, es en el que estoy. La primera carrera es 17, ahora 15,93, vale. Entonces estamos en este saldo. Eh, esta carrera es Brighton, 7 furlones. Voy aquí, pegar 7 furlones, pues nada. 
esta estrategia, hice ley, a qué hice ley. Realmente yo no me fijo si el favorito, ¿no? Sí, el favorito. No me fijo si el favorito, si no, si tal. Solo que para distinguir un poco. Así que nada, eh, voy a poner esta carrera, Brighton, que me ponga en el vídeo. Lo que os comentaba, esto es el método de los ciclos, que es de un trade brasileño que se llama Neptune. Y consta, bueno, estas son las directrices principales. Tú empiezas un ciclo con el dinero que sea. Entonces, haces un número de entradas y tienes un objetivo de esas entradas. Ni más ni menos el objetivo. A ver, a veces puede ser más o menos, claro, según cómo se ve. Entonces, cuando llegas al, al... Cuando doblas la banca, que no es tu banco, obviamente, es un stake con el que estás haciendo. Tú no puedes meterte en el ciclo eh, con todo tu banco porque es bastante arriesgado. Entonces, tú metes el stake con el que vas a hacer el ciclo. Cuando llegas a doblar, vuelves a meter los 200 euros. Es decir, te quedarías con 200 de beneficio y juegas sin riesgo a partir de aquí. Entonces, para la siguiente, en vez de jugar sin riesgo ya... De estos 200 que has sacado después, metes 100. Y así, la mitad de lo que has ganado lo vas metiendo. Entonces, si completas los 5 ciclos, eh, vas a multiplicar por 10 tu stake o tu banca, la que hayas usado. Entonces, bueno, yo aquí el ciclo 1, eh, he puesto como que son 15 entradas. Lo que voy a hacer, si hago más, de repente hago una carrera y veo que el caballo ya no gana ni de broma y tengo un profit de 80 euros, pues se va a recortar. Entonces, bueno, mi objetivo para esta carrera siguiente son 11,66 dólares. Si hago más, mejor. Si hago menos, pues, pues en la siguiente tendría que hacer más o hago más entradas. Y esta es, el, esta es la estrategia. Siempre la quise hacer, la verdad. Nunca me puse a hacerla porque el tradeo... Pues bueno, hay carreras que puedo hacer mucho más profit que otras y otras no. Entonces, pero no se me apetecía hacerlo y, y grabarlo. Entonces, pues nada, aquí estoy. Eh, lo importante es pasar del primer ciclo porque así ya juega sin riesgo y una vez que pases el primer ciclo pues bueno eh, intentar llegar al, al, a lo más lejos posible esta persona que es trader profesional desde hace 12 años o por ahí tiene una media de que completa los 5 ciclos una vez de cada 4 así que y en los últimos 7-8 años creo que tuvo un 19.000% de beneficio es decir multiplicó por 1900 verdad su eh, stake o la banca que utilizas en ese momento así que este imagino así que nada vamos a ello y, y a ver qué tal se da esta es la segunda la tercera carrera del, del reto y eh, bueno siete furlones la verdad son mis carreras favoritas de distancia las de siete furlones una milla también porque no son ni muy largas ni demasiado cortas ¿ves? a ver son cortas pero no es demasiado cortas como las de cinco furlones Incluso, no sé si es en Estados Unidos, que yo he hecho alguna de cuatro furlones. Y eso es un sprint, pero vamos. Así que nada, eh, vuelvo ahora cuando sea la carrera, que van a entrar los caballos, y seguimos. Candidates, so Cedric comes next. Vale. Towards eh, the outside is Dazzling in the white socks, just ahead of the red and white of King of War. Pushed along is River Wharf. Towards the back of the pack is Spirit Warning on the outside. Amethyst well back towards the inside and just being pushed along as Fieldsman it is who leads as they run downhill passing halfway. Fieldsman leads Major Gatsby. Shalfa still there on the running rails in the light green without wider Diamond Cottage. Dazzling and King of War traveling okay just behind the leaders. Mm -hmm. Then Mount Mogan. Mm -hmm. So Cedric mm -hmm. on the inside in the cheek pieces. River Wharf comes next next with Spirit Warning, and Amethyst still pushed along towards the inside. They fan out with two furlongs to go, Fieldsman being taken on now by Diamond Cottage towards the inside. Amethyst is making some ground with Shalfa. Down the outside, Diamond Cottage is still there with a chance and also trying to stay on his King of War. Fieldsman being taken on by Diamond Cottage towards the inside is Amethyst, who's made steady progress up the running rail. Down the outside, running on stoutly is King of War as well. Diamond Cottage has a narrow lead on the run to the line from King of War, all out Diamond Cottage possibly dropped the head where it mattered. Diamond Cottage, I think, is home in front. King of War and Fieldsman tight for second and third. Spirit Warning made late ground on the outside of Major Gatsby and Amethyst for fourth, fifth and sixth. Vamos a quien la hice ley. Ah, vale, al tercer favorito. Tercer favorito le hice ley. Hice 12,96, ¿no? Sí. Pues 12,96. Brighton, esto que fue al tercer favorito. Y esto es 
Bright. Vale, pues... No sé, vale. Pues nada, vamos a la siguiente. Huntington. Ahí media. Bueno, pues vamos a la siguiente carrera del de reto. Dos millas, carrera con obstáculos. Y vamos a ver. Eh, vamos a situarnos. Vale, es el favorito. El favorito. Voy a usar este Porque el otro no se este va bastante bien, la verdad. El Pandaviochi también. Es Pandaviochi. 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 Bueno, me gustan las cuotas de estas carreras, son, está bastante nivelada, puede pasar cualquier cosa. Así que bueno, hay que estar pendiente, súper atento y eh, La verdad que van bastante bien todos en general, no hay ninguno, quizá el 9. Está la carrera ya. Back of the field with Thorpe Ness as they go towards the first of the two on the far side. This one is five. Is the the Imperial class. Admiral has come back to the king going <laughs> Fan Dabby Dozy, Baby's Derby Day, as they cross the first in the back. Right behind them is Uggy Uggy Uggy. Entre mal, porque lo vi haciendo presión, pero era por el salto. Pulling for his head. And then in midfield we have Love Mystery racing wide. Bueno, Siguiente carrera, Wolverhampton. Esta me gusta, siete furlones. Ya se tiene que dar bien. Pues fijaos, ¿eh? esta carrera interesante para volver a ver, ¿no? Y ver ahí. 
over seven furlongs. Gortray blew the start very slowly away. From the inside, Profit given out smartly. Moralisa and Owl Island giving chase. Out wide aim for the moon is showing plenty of dash. Goes up to press for the lead. The leading quartet are hunted up by Sail on Silver Bird and Tangled in Time. Eden Storm in front of Island Luck as Profit Given leads them inside the final five furlongs. Aim for the Moon, Owl Island run second and third. Moralisa, Sail on Silver Bird are fourth and fifth. Eden Storm rounds out the leading half dozen. Then Tangled in Time from Story of Peace and Island Luck. They've gone a decent gallop here. Gortray, who jumped off last, remains there. Queensland boys in the rear, together with All Inclusive, and they're on the approach to the final three furlongs. Profit given the leader from Aim for the Moon, a handy second. Owl Island within a length of the lead in third on the rail from Sail on Silverbird. Moralisa, Eden Storm sixth as they pass the two in front of Tangled in Time, Story of Peace, and they've gone clear of the remainder. Profit given with a red cap leads them in, but Owl Island now launches a challenge, takes second off Aim for the Moon, who's struggling to go with them. Owl Island picks up the running, entering the final furlong. Sail on Silverbird running on with Eden Storm for a place but Owl Island is clearing away under James Doyle Eden Storm no diggity and seas of L's arm to follow one more yeah. flagman's just been reversed out of the gate sure whether he went in the right hole. Bueno, entonces, eh, vamos a hacer la carrera, Back se te fue uno en Hampton. Sería el Seas of Elves arm incoming. Este es el último, ¿no? El favorito dentro. Set. Vale. Gates are shut. And they're off. It's a race over seven furlongs. For the search fit stairs on the chat. Ya, no Handicap ya. stakes. Setting down Moodley here <coughs> and Flagman the first two to show bien. with Global Romance around right the outside top favourite Sue Prominent. Okay, Crystal Dawn tracks the leading quartet off into the back straight ahead of Seas of Elf Arm. The pace is only middling, bien, written broadcast okay. with no diggity in rear arm for a quarter of a no mile. Up front, Moodle Hymn's now been headed by Pop yeah, Favourite, who has pulled his way into the lead. Flagman remains prominent in front of <coughs> Romance, Seas of Elves Arm on the outside of Crystal Dawn, then up the rail is written broadcast and no brings up the, the rear. Heading out of the back straight Pero towards the final three furlongs, Hobbs favourite clear by three lengths, Moodle him in second, a length to Flagman, Global Romance, Seas of Elves Arm, written broadcast, Crystal Dawn, and finally no diggity, just over a quarter of a mile to go. Pop faded by two and a half. Moodle him trying to bridge the gap. Flagman a length and a half away in third. Seas of Elves arm driven along on the outside, not picking up. Written broadcast is running on along with Global Romance. Pop favourite a more than a length clear passing the furlong pole, but written broadcast. Crystal Dawn, Moodle him are all closing in. Pop favourite swallowed up inside the final hundred yards by written broadcast, who goes on to win by a length. La vi bien esta porque esto me fue lento, no, no pude salir ni hacer nada. Tuve muchísimo riesgo. Salió bien. Ah, eh, era este, este era el que nos estábamos fijando para hacer ley, que salió mal. Así que. Así que nada, vamos allá. Vamos a ver los comentarios. Es Crafty Gale. Es Extreme Out of the Flight, head up to Pass the Church. Maxi Osho with Matter Matuta improving to be a close second. And they're followed towards the inside in the black and red by Rain of Glory. Outside that one is Crafty Gale, and between them, the green and white checks of fireworks. Followed towards flight number two by Veil of Glory towards the inside, and touch towards the outer, it's indulging and wider still. Gray making headway is our Bobby as they jump flight number two and head to the top of the track. Maxi Osho leads from Matter Matuta. As they make the right-handed swing to flight number three, close up on the outside are Bobby on the rail. As they make the turn is Stansfield ahead of Fireworks. Then Crafty Gale towards the inside is Vale of Glory with Indulging, also there in mid division. As they begin the downhill run is Skip Maller. As they continue away from the stands, good run before they reach flight number four. 
and continuing in front is Maxia Shaw, Warren Miguel, followed closely by up on the outside yeah, our Bobby Nile Moore, alongside is Matt like Matuta, Rachel Blackmore, just behind them, fireworks, <laughs> Jody McGarvey. Towards the inside in the black and red is Stansfield, Philip Dunover. Close up to Crafty Gale with Ben Harvey as they head away from flight number four, about to make the swing into the back straight. Matter Matuta has edged on. Our Bobby moves up on the outside of Maxius' show and then fireworks towards the inside Stansfield and Crafty Gale in Vale of Glory and then indulging and behind indulging is Skip Mahler in mid division ahead of Alphonse Legrand as they jump that flight. Towards the inside is Presenting Lad. With them is Carlton Garden showing in front of Brega. Towards the back is Goodbye Milan as they continue down the far side. They have four flights to jump. Martin Matuta leads by just less than a length to our Bobby in second, a break of about three then. To Maxia's show still there on the inside of Fireworks. Crafty Gale is next. They're followed away from that by Vade of Glory and then Stansfield and Indulging. And then in mid division is two plus two equals towards the inside as they make the turn out of the back straight. They're tightly grouped, Matter Matuta. From in second hour, Bobby, close in behind him, Crafty Gale, improving up on the outside in yellow and white is Alphonse Legrand. Right there on the inner is Fireworks, and they're chased by Brega, indulging. Maxia Show beating a retreat, improving behind him is Skip Maller. As they approach their third last flight, and away from it, Mata Matuta with our Bobby towards the outside, and they're chased towards the straight by Fireworks. Crafty Gale is alongside. Trying to make headway behind him. The outside is Brega. Brega of Glory is just behind him. Skip Mahler and indulging her in touch and presenting that is creeping into contention. A break then as they approach the straight to Carlton Gardens as they swing into the straight. Mata Matuta with our Bobby pressing on the outside. Crafty Gale just behind him on the inside is Vale of Glory. Presenting that tracks them in as they straighten up and head for the final flight. Mata Matuta over on the rail. The grey is our Bobby. Crafty Gale towards the outside with. The cheek piece and coming through one off the rail, Veil of Glory has taken over yeah, as they are post the final flight. Veil of Glory leads. Crafty Gale, our Bobby Matter Matuta now back and forth. A mistake by the leader, but Veil of Glory a few lengths clear. Our Bobby on the outside, Crafty Gale is staying on. Veil of Glory far side, Crafty Gale staying on stand side. Behind him in third is our Bobby, but Veil of Glory and on Kenny will win it by a length. Crafty Gale second, our Bobby third to break to indulge. Lea este. Y bueno, ya estamos en 60%, 61,77%. Queda poco ya para llegar al, al objetivo del primer ciclo. Brighton, ¿cuánto es esto? Una milla, cuatro furgones. Una milla, cuatro furgones. El siguiente va a ser Huntington. A ver. Esta carrera me gusta mucho. Las cuotas están buenas. No sé quién es este. No hay ningún cabeza de parezca. On the inside, later Darling is also restrained, and the feature of this race is the crawl through the first two furlongs. In fourth place is Alazar on the inside of the Grey Serene. Back to Seattle King, who's having a good afternoon, and I appreciate the fact they're not making a test of stamina at the moment. And the back of the pack is D-Day Odette, who has dropped out at the start. So they're just about to complete the climb now and turn left-handed inside the final nine furlongs. The free-running Aya has the lead from in second place. Races Largo Bay, disputing that position with later Darling. The pace has not picked up at all. So Rake, the grey and the white cheek pieces on the outside of Alazar and the white jacket behind the Seattle King alongside D-Day Odette as they're now preparing to attack across and cut the corner as they make their way now down inside the final mile. So Aliyar has led them at this very sedate pace. Later Darling in second place in black and white. Largo Bay and Zorega the next two with Alazar. Last two remain Seattle King right at the back D-Day Odette. So having cut the corner, they'll move back towards the inside as they approach the final three quarters of a mile. They've taken a good deal of time to cover the first half of this contest as they cross Wilson Avenue without in the lead, Aya. Second place for later, Darling, and in third is Largo Bay. 
So Ray on the outside of Alazar. Dide Odette comes next on the inside of Seattle King. Bit of a flash of the tail there from Dide Odette at the back of the pack as they continue to climb once more. And now they'll swing downhill. Zaya leads them by a length from in second place later Darling. Right. Third place belongs to Largo oh, Bay, yes. then to Reagan Alazar. And the back the two are Dide Odette and Seattle King just being bumped along now as they make their way down with three furlongs to travel. And out in the lead, later Darling has moved through to press Ayar. Alazar in the white jacket is slipstreaming the leader with Saray. Progress from D-Day Odette towards the outside has picked up quite well. Responded well to pressure. He's out in the lead, later Darling now tries to make the best of his way home. D-Day Odette and Alazar, and then towards the inside Largo Bay. Seattle King comes next. As out in the lead, it's later Darling who still has this advantage, and it's still two lengths. Alazar hanging back to the running rail in second. D-Day Odette in third. And then Largo Bay, but later, darling, for Rob Hornby pues, is maintaining the gallop. We're double pues, on the day for Amanda Perry. As later, 79. darling. A ver si 9. A ver, vamos a poner aquí 25,79. Y hice ley al, al tercer favorito también. Bueno, pues mira, tercer favorito. Y me quedan apenas... Estamos en 350. <risa> vale, entonces vamos a Huntington. Empieza ahora ya. Dos millas, cuatro furlones. O coñazo, pero bueno. Huntington, dos millas, cuatro furlones. Y a ver cómo será. Um, so, has... Huntington, dos días, cuatro furlones. Yo creo, espero, eh, que en tres carreras máximo termine ya el ciclo uno del reto. Yellow and at the Glen, the pale colors, the three early leaders. Let's be having you close up with Cloudy Wednesday in fifth. And then comes Glee Robe, not Cara, is next. Bueno, vamos allá. Voy a fijar, por ejemplo, they go into the second fence in este azul again we'll take it without problem we've got through the bottom weights joint bottom weight making es it with fellow Glenn, bottom weights ball. agent Samoir and top weight out the Glen makes a line of three there's a Porque couple of lengths back to the next let's be having you've got the white cheek pieces oh, yeah, Wednesday no close up <laughs> making fence number three over on the far side agent Sanwar not fluent there and a slight yeah, mistake no, in the back from just the newcomer lock carrot as they press on towards the fourth and this is an open ditch Guttrell and pues mira, Agent este Sanwa at the Glen, between the three leaders. Two length break to Cloudy Wentz, who's got the hoops on the sleeves. Then let's be avenue, the white sleeves of Glebe Road. Lock Caro in the blue and red, and vale, este in the back of the field, Stamina Chope. They all Estamos took the fifth bien. fence safely, and they make the run out of the back straights. First time round, they just jumped two in the straight this time, one after the winning post. The uh, fence that would normally be taken. As the seventh in this race and the last on the final circuit being omitted, having been damaged in the first race. So taking them along, it's at the Glen, the dual course winner with the cheek pieces on for the first time. And the Sean Bowen today leads the field in from Guttrell and Harry Bannister and then close up Cloudy Wednesday. Agent Sunwa the Grey has lost a place or two under Sam Twist and Davis now races in fourth, just ahead of Letsby Avenue and Harry Kimber. And then comes Glebe Road, Glebe Road being followed by Lock Carra and with a white face towards the inside rail is Samson Chope. So taking the fence that'll be the last next time round. Agent Sun are out to the left a little, but uh, no damage done as they now bypass what would be fence number seven. So they make their way around it. It's a cloudy Wednesday. It's taking quite a keen grip coming through to dispute it without the Glen there. One and two as they pass the stands and then close up Letsby Avenue and Guttrell and uh, Agent Sanwa. And that leading five are a length ahead of Glebe Road, who's alongside Lock Carra, and at the back of the field, Stamina Chope under Lee Edwards. But only half a dozen lengths covers the party as they now take what is number seven in this race. And the keen going Cloudy Wednesday has uh, pulled his way into a two length advantage going into the wings of number seven. Takes it from out the Glen in second. And all take that one without problem and swing away towards the far side of the course. Back in third place, Let's Be Avenue. Close up is Guttrell. Now in a share of third as they take this right-hander and head out to the far side. Agent Sanwa positioned towards the outside is next. Yeah, and then comes the Glebe Road, Lock Carra, and 
Stamina Joe. They make the run past their departure point over on the far side of the course and on towards fence number eight. Cloudy Wednesday takes it safely. Agent Sanwa is big at that fence, pushed along on landing. Quick run now towards the next number nine. Cloudy Wednesday, better than at the Glen at that one. Agent Sanwa disputes third with Guttrell. Let's be Avenue and still the back three are Samson Chope and Lock Carra. And on their outside, as they head away down the far side, Glebe Road going towards the next in the back straight. A plain fence, Let's Be Avenue hit the top of that fence, pushed along on landing. They continue over on the far side towards the open ditch. This is actually three from home. Cloudy Wednesday and out the Glen. They've always been in the front group and they're leading the field towards the end of the back straight, but still barely half a dozen lengths uh, covering the party. Glebe Road just beginning to feel the pinch at the back of the field, but still in touch as they jump the last on the far side. Agent Sanwell was very slow. The leader, in contrast, was good. Cloudy Wednesday landed a length clear out the Glen in second. Guttrell still positioned there in third in a dispute of that position with Letsby Avenue as they take this right-hand swing. Samson Chope has made some ground, but he's being ridden to do so. And the Glebe Road's trying to improve again from the back of the field. Lock Carr has always been in the rear group, and after some less than fluent leaps, Agent Sanwell has dropped to the back. But they swing for home, just the one fence to take, and then a running of a couple of furlongs. Cloudy Wednesday and out the Glen have dominated proceedings from an early stage. They lead in from Letsby Avenue and Guttrell and then Samson Choke as they make the run then towards this uh, final fence. And coming to oh, take it, it's Cloudy it Wednesday who leads, but out the Glen is putting in a strong challenge. Now they've got a run in of a couple of furlongs, and then back in third is uh, Guttrell in fourth place, the white faced Samson Chope, and then follows uh, back in fifth, Let's Be Avenue. Lock Carra making some light ground, but uh, not getting on terms, and the two leaders having a rare old tussle here. They've had a good battle for the lead throughout. Out the Glen, the near side, Cloudy Wednesday picking up again on the far side, and so very little between them as they head towards the line, but it's Cloudy Wednesday who fans a bit more for Lewis Stones and goes on to win. At the Glen will just hang on to second from the strong finishing Guttrell and Samson Chope was back in fourth. <coughs> Extended mile for the Sky Sports Racing Sky 415 Handicap. <coughs> Rai is the first to show to advantage to Quantum Light on the rail. Flame Spirit going up prominence ahead of Star Child. Born Ruler <coughs> settles in fifth as they bear left handed out of the home straight. Forest Demon chases the front rank in advance of Hat Toss. And then follows Cody Mann and no barrier is playing catch-up as Darai leads them <coughs> inside the final three quarters of a mile, steadying the tempo as he does. Flame Spirit's gone second. Quantum Light levels off down the back straight in third. <coughs> ahead of Star Child and Born Ruler disputing fourth. Three lengths off the leader. Length and a half to Forest Demon. Hat Toss, Cody Mann este and still no in rear is no barrier. <coughs> Four and a half furlongs to cover. Darai on the inside of Flame Spirit. Tracked by Quantum Light. Star Child. Hat Toss the outside of Born Ruler. Forest Demon in the last trio. Cody Man and a pushed along no barrier. Remains the back marker. Approaching the last three furlongs. Darai from Flame Spirit a close second. Quantum Light. Hat Toss making headway. Born Ruler. A little bit short of room on the inside as the pace begins to lift. Then Star Child and Forest Demon and Cody Man and still in rear is no barrier. Flame Spirit quickened up on the outside to take over inside the two. To long-time leader Darai, couple of lengths to Quantum yeah, Light and Hat Toss. And down yeah, the outside, yeah. Cody Man yeah, is running on with Forest Demon. The leader, Flame Spirit, shifting yeah, off a straight yeah, line. Yeah. Quantum Light, Hat yeah, Toss, Darai yeah, fading yeah. on the inside. Flame Spirit with the... Vamos, acabamos el ciclo. Acabamos el ciclo 1. Listo. Sobraron 2 dólares y acabó el ciclo. 